season replays, the fantasy drafts, ultimate creative leagues, and what if the tournament? It's Coffee Cup Games with the coach DKM. Hey, 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 it's coach DK. Hope you guys are doing well. Continuing our series in the year 1900 using Stratomatic. Nobody's made it to the World Series yet, or what we call the Diamond Cup. We did Game 6 of the National League Championship Series yesterday in our last episode. St. Louis ended up finally winning a game on the road in Brooklyn after losing the first two games, games 1 and 2, in extra innings. They won 14 to 9, which means we are going to have a Game 7. And in the American League, it is Buffalo leading the series 3 games to 2. So, let's see what happens. And as mentioned, we will be doing Game 6 of the American League Championship Series. We have the number 7 Buffalo Bulls and the number 1 Chicago Invaders. Buffalo leads the series three games to two. They had a three to one lead. Chicago won on the road in Buffalo. And now the series is going to Chicago for the next possible two games. Buffalo wins therein. Chicago wins. We got a game seven in both the American and the National League. So what are they going to do to try to help their cause for Buffalo? They're going to send Southpaw Doc Amol. He is uh, their number one starter. He had 47 games started during the regular season in our replay. He went 14 and 21, zero saves with a very respectful, especially for a number seven seed, seventh worst team in the majors or in the American League, a 3.64 ERA. He's been great in the postseason. He is four and one with a 3.40 ERA in six games. For Chicago, we're going to send Chauncey Fisher. He went 19 and 17 with three saves in the regular season with a amazing 2.14 ERA in the postseason. He has pitched six games, so he's only started one. He has a 0.60 ERA, so we're going to take him off the relief and we're going to send him back for a second time onto the mound to start a game. And the lineups for both Buffalo and Chicago, if you want to pause and take a closer look at the stats and the positions and all that stuff, go ahead and do that. But we're just going to zip through it real quick. For Buffalo, they have center fielder Getman leading off. They have Atherton, who has three home runs, 14 RBIs, and a 348 average. The second baseman is batting second. Shrek and Goss, the catcher, is batting third. Halligan, the right fielder, is batting fourth. In the five hole will be Jack Noll, who's been struggling, hitting only 216. The left fielder, Hallman, the shortstop, he also is hitting 348, tied with Atherton leading the team. He's going to be batting six. Carey. The first baseman leading the team in RBIs, he's going to be batting seventh. And Doc Andrews, the third baseman, will be batting eighth. Doc Amoli, obviously the pitcher, batting ninth. For Chicago, mixed up the lineup a little bit. We decided to go with Patton, who's leading the team with 11 stolen bases to lead off. Dummy Hoy, who's been struggling, though he does have eight stolen bases, he's going to be batting in the number two spot. Sugnan is going to be batting in the three spot. The first baseman's hitting 309. Shugert, our power hitter, with hitting 292, three home runs, 12 RBIs. He's going to be uh, batting fourth. Wood, the catcher, hitting 350, batting fifth. Hartman, the third baseman, batting sixth. We're going to go with Frank Isbell in left field. He's hitting 286. He's going to be batting seventh. Sheeran, the right fielder, struggling, hitting 216. He's batting eighth. And of course, Chauncey Fisher, the pitcher, will be batting ninth. But before we jump into the game, I'm going to ask you guys, hey, take a moment, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Hey, as you're watching, I'll leave some comments. I always try to get back to everybody or reply back. Um, always enjoy seeing the feedback. So now let's jump into the action. All right, it's game six in Southside Park 3 of Chicago. We got Chauncey Fisher on the mound. Leading off for Buffalo will be Getman, the Center fielder's hitting 319, and he's going to lead off with a line out to Hartman at third, so that's going to be one away. Atherton, probably their best hitter. He's going to pop out the pad in that second, so that's going to be two down. Next up, Schreckengoss, the catcher, hitting 297. It's going to hit a ground ball to Hartman. He's going to fling it on over to first, and that's going to be a one, two, three inning. Bottom of the first, here's Padden going against Doc Mole. Padden is going to hit a fly ball to center field, and that's going to be one down. Dummy Hoy struggling in the postseason, though he did have a couple of hits in his last game. He's going to pop out the first, so that's going to be two down. And here's Sugden, the first baseman, hitting 309. He's going to hit a fly ball to Getman in center field, who's going to have to make a play. And Getman dives. Ooh. He cannot get it, so Sugden is able to get a single on a base hit. 
Shugert's up. He's been our power hitter. He's got three home runs, 12 RBIs. He's going to hit a single into left field to Jack Knoll, but we're not going to send Sugden, who's not that fast, and the fact that it's the left field with a throw going to third. So runners on first and second. Here's Wood. He's hitting 350. He's got five doubles. He needs a one to three. He gets a two. So that's going to be a single. We're going to try to send Sugden. We're going to send all the other runners. And it looks like Sugden's going to be safe at home as he easily beats the throw. So Wood with an RBI single in the bottom of the first. Now we have runners on second and third. As both runners advance on the throw, Hartman, the third baseman, is up. He's hitting 308. He's got eight RBIs. He needs a one to two. He gets a 16. That's going to be good enough for a double as that will score Wood and Schubert. Yeah! Frank Isbell's now up with a runner on second, two away, and he's going to fly ball to Halligan in right field. Halligan's going to have to make a play, and it is going to be dropped an air. Not sure how you get a fly ball into right field with two outs, and Hartman, who is at second, does not score. I mean, he should have been running on the hit. Such an idiot! But regardless, it is an error. Runners on first and third. Sheeran is up. He's hitting 218. He's obviously been struggling. He's going to continue to struggle as he fouls out to the catcher, leaving two runners on. But Chicago Invaders get three runs in the bottom of the first as we now enter top of the second. Chauncey Fisher back on the mound with a little bit of a lead. Ground balls by Halligan is going to be hit the pad, and Patton's able to make the play. That's going to be one down. Jack Knoll is up the left fielder. He's going to get the first hit for Buffalo, a single, and he's going to be on base. Doesn't get a good lead. Hallman, the shortstop, who's in 348, is going to hit a ground ball to Hartman. Whoopsies! And Hartman is going to make an air, as that's going to allow Knoll to go all the way to third. Hallman is going to be able to get the second. So runners on second and third. Carey, the first baseman's up. He's hitting 333. He has 15 RBIs, but this time he's going to be strikeout. A huge strikeout by Chauncey Fisher, bringing up now Doc Andrews. We're going to go ahead and we're going to walk him to go against the pitcher, Doc Amol. Doc Amol pops out the first base, so brilliant managerial skills by this guy genius so that's going to be a third out with the bases loaded and we're able to escape and now enter the bottom of the second chauncey fisher the pitcher is up he's going to help himself out as he's going to get a single he needs a one to six for a triple doesn't get it so uh he is going to be on first though here is Patton, the leadoff man hitting 313 he's going to hit a ground ball to holman Six four three double play. Apparently, the leadoff spot is not very good for Chicago. And Dummy Hoy, who has struggled, is going to ground out the third for the third out. One, two, three inning. Top of the third. Here is Getman. He's going to hit a fly ball to Dummy Hoy in center field, who's going to be able to make that play pretty easily. One down. Here's Atherton. Hits a ground ball to short. Man, that uh, column three was. Uh, rough so we just got lucky in that one so that's going to bring up Shrek and Goss the catcher he's going to get a single so he's going to be on base with two outs Halligan's up the right fielder hitting only 239 and he's going to get the third out so we enter the bottom of the third Sugden the first baseman hitting 319 he was one for one so far he got a single in the first inning he's going to line out this time that's going to be first out here's Sugar who's also one for one he's going to get out and now Wood the catcher, who likewise was one for one, he's going to get out. But Wood gets injured in the play. Ouch! Fatality. So we're going to have to make some changes. We'll be right back after we decide what we're going to do as Wood gets injured on the hit. <laughs> All right, so we decided to bring McFarlane, who we did not start. We actually brought Isbell in to start for him. Uh, so McFarlane's going to come in for Wood. We're going to move Sugden from first to the catcher. Isbell's going to go from the outfield to first. McFarlane's going to go to right, and Sharon's going to slide on over to the left. This is actually going to help us out more defensively. So Jack Knoll is up top of the fourth. He's one for one. He has uh, one of the two hits, but he's going to ground out the sugar to short. 
That's going to be one down. Here's Holland. He's 0 for 1. He's going to pop out to first base. And it looks like there's going to be another injury. He's going to have to come out, and uh, we're going to have to see what they decide to do. Here's Carey with two outs. He's going to line out, and the Hartman, and that's going to be a 1-2-3 inning. And it looks like they bring in Smith to play shortstop. So Hartman's up bottom of the fourth. He's one for one with a double and two RBIs. He needs a one. He doesn't get it. He gets the 17. It is good enough for a single. So he's going to be on base. And now we got Frank Isbell off to bat. Frank Isbell's 0 for 1. He's in 276. 3 0 lead. We're going to go ahead and let him swing away. And it's a good thing we did as we were thinking about the bunt. He needs a 1 to 12. He gets a 5. That's going to be a triple. She's going to score a run. We have a runner on third with no outs. And now we have Sheeran up, who is hitting 214. And it looks like it's going to be a wild pitch by Doc Amol. So Sheeran's not even going to have to work to get that run in. So Sheeran is now up. He's going to line out the third. That's going to be one away. And now Chauncey Fisher, the pitcher's up. He's going to got to hit his first at bat. He's going to draw a walk. So he's been on base twice. And now Patton is up. Patton needs a 1-3. to three. He's going to get a 16, so that's going to be a line out. And now we got Dummy Hoy, who's 0-2. He's going to hit a ground ball to first. Carey's just going to go ahead and tag the bag. And that's going to end the inning. But we did get two runs as we now lead it 5 to nothing. Chauncey Fisher and then allowed two hits through four innings. Is back on the mound. He's going against Doc Andrews. He's going to ground out to Patton in second. And that's going to be one down. Here's Docomo. They are going to bring in a new pinch hitter, Dan Kerwin, the pitcher and sometimes outfielder. It's going to come to bat. He's hitting only 217. He's going to pop out the second. So curious to see if they let Kerwin stay on the mound or not. Getman, which is the top of the order, he's hitting 310. He is 0 for 2 today, but he gets a walk. So he's going to be on base. The second walk issued by Chauncey Fisher Atherton, the most dangerous hitter for them. He's got to line out the first to Isbell, who snags it. And that's going to end the inning. And they do not leave Dan Kerwin um, in the game to go to the mound. They decide to bring in Edward Fersh, who is yet to pitch in the postseason. Sugden's up. He needs a 1-10. to 10. He doesn't get it. It's going to be a 19. So the single... Turns into a line out. One down. Here is Sugar. He's one for two. He's going to get a double. The opposite direction down the line. He's going to be able to get in there easily. As we now have a runner in scoring position with one out. Here's McFarlane. He, it's going to be his first at bat. He flies out. And that's going to be two down. Now Hartman's up. And it's going to be, it looks like a pass ball. So Sugar gets the third. And now Hartman, who is two for two with a double and two RBIs, is going to be able to have a chance to score a run. Not going to run, but he pops out the short for the third out. Here's Shrek and Goss, the catcher, top of the sixth. Shrek and Goss is one for two. He's going to pop out the second to pattern. That's going to be one down. Here's Halligan. Halligan hitting 235 is going to get a single. So he's going to get on base. And now Jack Knoll, who's one for two, is going to be up. He's going to hit a fly ball to right field. And that's going to be an out. Now Smith is up. Smith needs a one to five. He gets a four. So he's going to get a single. That's going to be running on first and second with two outs. Carries up, who's hitting 323, who leads the team with RBIs. He's going to hit a book ground ball to Sugar. He's going to toss it to second. And that's going to end the inning with the fielder's choice with the runners on first and second. Probably one of their best chances to score. Frank Isbell's up. He's one for two with a triple. He's hitting 300. He needs a one. He doesn't get it. He gets a 16, which is good enough for a single. He has a chance to push it for a double. We are not. We're just going to take the easy play. And so he's on first. And now uh, Sheeran, the left fielder's up. Who's hitting 211. Sheeran, 0 for 2 today. He's going to hit a... Solid shot to Andrews, who makes a great play. Flings it over to first for a double play. Bruh. As Isbell got caught off the bag, Chauncey Fisher, who's one for one with a walk, is finally going to be put out, as that's going to be a 1-2-3 inning. So after six, we have Chicago's winning 5-0. to zero. Chicago has five runs on nine hits with one air. 
Buffalo has zero runs, four hits, one error. John C. Fisher continues to be dominant. He's going against Doc Andrews, the third baseman. He's going to line up the Sugar to short. One down. Here's Hirsch, the pitcher. They are going to pull him and bring in Jim Gary. Jim Gary is up. He is going to hit a pop-up, it looks like, the to the catcher who flings his mask off and makes the play. Two down, and now Getman's up. He's 0 for 2. He's going to hit a fly ball to center field. So Chauncey Fisher continues to pitch a gem. Through seven innings, he has a shutout going. Bottom of the seventh, Patton is up as we are at the top of the order. Patton is 0 for 3 today, though he is hitting 3 over 4, but he's going to be strike out. So I tell you what, our leadoff spot has been absolutely treacherous for us. Dummy Hoy, he's usually in the leadoff spot and struggled hitting 222. He's now going to fly off the center field. That's going to be two away. And now Sugden's up. He's going to hit a ground ball to Andrews and third. It's a two hopper, and Sugden is out as Doc Andrews is able to make that play. Top of the eighth. Atherton's up, their best hitter, and he's going to be strikeout. Wow. They have kept him on ice. Striking guys to catcher hitting 299. It's going to pop out the second. Man, that another time that three column could have really gotten us, but we get out of it. Halligan's up, hitting only 246. He's going to ground ball back to Fisher, and that's going to be the third out. Bottom of the eighth. Sugar, two for three, one double. He's going to hit a ground ball to Atherton. That's going to be one down. McFarland's up. He's going to hit a fly ball to right field. Halligan's there, two down. And finally, we have Hartman, the third baseman. He's two for three with a double, two RBIs. He's going to get on base with a walk. We are going to try to steal. We do not get a good lead. We're going to try again. Still have over a 50% chance. You're out! And he's going to be thrown out at second. Took a risk there. Didn't work. But that takes us now top of the ninth. Chicago, three outs away from pushing this series to a game seven. Buffalo down five to nothing. Definitely needs a rally. Jack Knowles up. He's going to lead off with a single. So that's a great start for them. And now Smith's up. He's going to get a single. As they now have two runners on with no outs. Carry the first baseman in 317. He's going to get a strikeout for the second time. As that's going to be one down. Doc Andrews is up. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. He's going to rip a single to right field. And that's going to bring the bases loaded. Even though Fisher has not allowed a run, I think we might need to look at bringing in a reliever. <laughs> All right, so we decided to bring in Frank Killen, the Southpaw. And which is then going to force Buffalo to bring in George Spear, the right-hander, so they can get the right, righty-lefty matchup. Killen is able to pitch, and it is going to be a single by Spear. He's safe! As they score two runs in that one. Don't! So runners on first and second, still only one out. As we're now going to bring in Jack Cattole, the right-hander. He has gotten uh, plenty of innings pitched. He's got a 5-0 and zero with a 1.88 ERA. He's got top of the order up for Buffalo as the tying run is at bat. Getman. Facing Katol Katol with a huge strikeout. So that's going to be two away. And now Atherton, who is 0 for 4 today, but does have three home runs, three triples, 14 RBI, sitting 329, and has gotten more walks than strikeouts. So let's see with the big matchup. Atherton 0 for 4 today. And Katol gets both batters out for the save. So what can I say? As Shrek, or excuse me, Atherton lines out to Frank uh, Isbell, and that's going to end the inning. And like the National League, we will have a game seven. 
All right, so there you go. That's going to be the episode. We're going to just do one game, but coming into the next couple episodes, we're going to see Game 7 of both the American League first and then the National League to see which teams will represent their respective leagues in the Diamond Cup. Until next time, this is Coach DK. Have a good one. Bye.